for the fallen and the lost I will stand my ground with the fury of the storm to duty I am bound loyalty my banner courage as my creed for the comrades I have lost their spirits I will feed Hi, hello everybody, and welcome to Dream Warriors, The Adventures of Lockstitch. This is episode 13. Today we are playing Fiasco by, I believe, Bully Pit Games. Um, we, We've all played Fiasco, or Bully most of us. What's that? Bully Pulpit. Oh, sorry. Bully Pulpit Games. Um, I think this game is great. We are using just a set deck. It is um, Camp Death. And so, everybody, most of you have given me, like, what your characters are doing in the camp. Camp has been on for a couple of days. Like, you guys have already unpacked. You've already said hello to your old friends. Like, you've gotten to know the, um, camp counselors. Which include the players that we have here. It is the tone of an 80s horror movie. A lot of the villains, a lot of people have played a lot of traps. If that card, if the location gets played by one of our players, it springs the trap. And we have RP prompts that the um, villains have written for us. And we will tell you in chat what is happening to your character at first. And then we will make rolls against each other to see if you make it out alive. If 
the villain in this game gets to that character before the trap goes off, it is a um it is this it is our villain's victory. They beat you. They got there first. And for the record, this is Midnight's Nightmare. So expect a bit fair bit of betrayal. And yeah, let's get to the game. So first, we have High Noon, played by Kawari. Hey dudes, how's it going? Aw, oh, sick, brah. We got Howl, played by Lancer. Sup, campers. We've got Ivo, played by Palka... Pa I can't say it. Should I just say Parfait? Pekka Parfait. Why do I want to say Palka? Do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Here's McBoots it is. Hi, everyone. Oh. <laughs> All right. And we've got Pim, played by Carrie. Summer camp is in session! Sick. Alright, so... The, everybody has their cards for their relationships. Um, we usually... We can start at the top, or if anybody has, like, a, where they want to start. The first round, we go clockwise. Second round, we go counterclockwise. Again, feel free to play cards from your hand on other people's cards to, like, add flavor to it. Oh, so we, we go around twice and then we start doing the scenes. We don't do scenes until the cards are out. And then we go around, do scenes, decide whether they are positive or negative, and see if everybody dies. All of mine go counterclockwise. Uh, you have no relationship with. with I do, High but noon? he, High Noon, has all the relationship cards for us. Do you have any objects that connect you to High Noon? Do you have a um, location that connects you to High Noon? I don't have any locations. That's um, sick. Your hand must be awful. It is awful. Um. <laughs> I let's let's do this. Let's you. Uh, I have an object that I would like to use, uh, and it is r information. It's ridiculous, creepy camp legends. Okay, so there's a camp legend be that you and um, High Noon know about. What is it? What's the legend? So I'm gonna plop that in there. So. A long time ago, before any of us were born, this was still a summer camp. And a couple of kids decided they were going to sneak out in the middle of the night for a late night makeout session. And while they were out in the woods, a murderer crept through and cut off their heads. And he tied their heads up in the trees, and then their bodies were never found. And now, t even to this day, people say that they can see their headless bodies wandering around in the woods, searching for their heads. Dark. Eh. Spooky. But Midnight and I, when we were kids and we went to this camp, because we've been friends since we were kids. We we thought we saw them. We thought we saw them. So now we're a little afraid to go out in the woods by ourselves at night. We always take a buddy. Buddy system. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. The... There's a legend in the forest about headless people. Uh, 
All right. High noon. You got something that links you and Ivo? I, I think I'm just recently meeting Ivo, so I, I'm always a friendly, a friendly dude. I, I, I need to always make friends with everyone I meet, so I think I have a need to get in with this new group of friends. If the group of friends is Howell and Ivo, because I think I know kind of what their relationship's going to be like. Based on... No, I know. No, no, I don't. Never mind. This is fun. Alright, Ivo. What's your relationship with Howell? The only card that works is the weed. <laughs> Gotta love the weed. <laughs> I, I guess just I I got some weak guys. That actually works perfect for what I got. I both got the good good. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta stop putting marijuana in the game. <laughs> I mean, this is a hundred percent this game's fault. It's none of our fault. Absolutely. Great. Alright. So Howl to Pim. <laughs> so because I was smuggling weed in, I am definitely dealing it. We got work. I deal it, and I smoke it. I am Pim's supplier. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yep. Mm hmm. And now Pim to Howl. So we're going with romance uh, and we have obnoxious public displays of affection. So she's going to have her um, cake and smoke it, too. <laughs> <laughs> Mm hmm absolutely. Or, or, I don't know, do I do that, or do I do the need to get laid? Um... I don't know, up to you, Hal. Do we go with the need to get laid, because that's what you do at summer camp, or the obnoxious public uh, displays? I think the need to get laid is more suiting. I think that's what you do at summer camp. I think that's what you do at summer camp. Okay. I've never been to summer camp, so I don't know. Yeah, we're going to do the need to get laid. Because that will include public displays of affection anyway. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we're going to use that one. Yep. It's like... I howl to Ivo? Oh, my game just freaked out, so we're going to reload in. But the card that I have is we are bound by a dark secret. How did Ivo get those drugs? <laughs> the trunk of her car. Like what? Like a definitely like a what are they called? Just a Buick style, like fucking like boxy as hell. Mm hmm. All right. Ivo to high noon. Um, all of my cards are mean. He wants to get in. He looks really up to you. If you want to be mean, you can be mean. <laughs> I don't want to be. <laughs> like, what What do you got that's mean? Um. We got to get out of a stifling relationship. 
to get away with a lie. I, I love the fact To get that... even for what they did last year. <laughs> and then to get respect by showing them who's in charge. <laughs> Jesus, okay. <laughs> they're, all, I said, they're all kind of... <laughs> the idea that all he wants to do Here, is how be about we friend? meet? Have a location. <laughs> okay, yeah, where do you hang out? We we meet at cabin 13. Ah, oh, sick. I heard that Soki and um Rupert are currently putting on a séance in cabin 13. They're campers. Cabin 13 has been repeatedly attacked by, um, wolves, by the way. I feel like that needs to be mentioned. It's mostly howls in the middle of the night, and there has been some evidence of claw marks. Dude, they swear it wasn't me. You're lucky that Administrator Peanut died. Because he'd be <laughs> looking at you side-eyed. Oh yeah, by the way, um they killed Peanut the other day. Tragic. Yeah. Rest in peace, Peanut. He won't. Rest in Peanut. He'll be back. <laughs> um <laughs> Midnight I uh, sorry. High noon to Pim. Well, obviously Pim's has been my best bud since high school. Duh. Oh, great school. Great school. Best friends forever. Absolutely. Who else is gonna braid your hair? I don't think anyone else could handle it. <laughs> Ow! <-woo -woo. laughs> so here we are. Um. Where do we want to start? Like, we do have a location. Um, the cabins. Does anybody have a scene that pops into mind for summer camp horror movie? So many. I don't know. Like, I mean, there's the like counselors and campers in the mess hall to start with type situation or like telling stories around campfire or like is it daytime is it nighttime what time is it what time do you what time makes the good time for like okay the the rock song is currently playing over like a view of the landscape around the campyards. We are flying around Sonnery. We are flying over Nomen. We are hearing the ticking of the monstrous clock. We swoop in and we'll get really close to Gooseburg. Very much suburbs, very much um, Edward Sitter's hands. Goosedale, sorry. As we fly through Goosedale, very early suburbs early um 80 suburbs and then we go up and we fly right into camp and we see pim walking out of the cabin and the rock music fades away as she delivers the opening line of the movie what time of day is that i think dusk I think it's dusk. Yes. Getting the kids together and stuff so that, like, responsibilities are done. Once the kids are down, you guys can, like, stay up and party. Yeah. Yep. Time for the counselors to have a little bit of fun. 
Uh, real quick, let me just, like, read the room a bit. Are we bad at our jobs as counselors? It's the 80s, and it's a horror movie. Of course we are. <laughs> we think we're great at them, though. We think we're so good, but we're going to complain about it because we're not getting paid enough. These kids are freaking annoying, and we're just doing this for money. You know, like, oh, God. If you guys need NPCs, though, um, our players are all characters. Um, a couple just standout highlights that I need you guys to, like, focus on a little bit. Is is a very nerdy cat wandering around. Um, she has bottle cap glasses and just the biggest headpiece you've ever seen. And oh, you mean train tracks? She's in my cabin. She's nice a goddamn enough. disaster. Love her. Um, and also your co-worker and lifeguard, Patagon. Um, he's He hangs out on the island. Great so, dude. So. But what's all right? All right, Pam. What is our what is our opening scene? And remember, as she's like, once she starts her scene, anybody can have it end positively or negatively whenever you want. Okay, or, Pim's gonna be. Oh, go ahead. I was gonna say I forgot. Or, if you can't think of a scene, um, and another player can think of a scene, you can tell us how it ends, and we give you that scene to do. So I would say, so yeah, camera comes in, swoops down on Pim walking out of her cabin. And she just starts clapping. She's like, okay, girls, come on. It's time. Come on in. All right, let's go. Come on. It's time to lay down. Lights out is in 10 minutes. Like little otter girl, Noel, walking by. She's like, I want to stay up and swim some more. You can swim tomorrow, okay, honey? You swam mm -hmm. enough today. I'm surprised you're not a prune. It's like, you guys can stay up. I won't be cool and stay up with you. In a couple of years, you can. Let me see your beans. You have no. to see, look at that. You're all wrinkly. No. She's got something behind her back. What's behind your back? thing I found in the water. It's cool. Let me see it. What is it? If it's cool enough, I'll let you keep it. He, like, holds it out. There is a severed hand. Noelle? Is it? Okay. I got you. And she just, like, flops it. Okay. Well, fucking kids. And she's just gonna kick it off of the porch of the cabin. And uh, she'll look at that later. Uh, all right, come on, girls. Let's go. Let's go. All right, Flynn. Has anybody seen Flynn? Flynn? Where is that metal head? And she's going to look around. And like, it looks like Flynn is looking for her book to read before bed. So, everyone... Um, does it end positively or negatively? In this situation, does she find Flynn? Um, and you, can you guys see the um, cards at the right side here? Of the... Oh, you guys can't see me clicking that stuff. But it's on the right side of our screen. Uh, yep. There's a red one and a um, blue one. So if... If you want it to end badly, drag the green, uh, red one. If you want it to end positively, the blue one. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, all right, Pim. Where'd you find Flynn? She was like inside of a trunk looking for a book it looks like she said she was looking for her book to read before bed um oh. in chat so uh she's just gonna walk over and kind of like pick her up out of the trunk and just be like there you are all I really right think that that is that one scene in a movie with the the 
violin starts picking up very slowly as like Pim's walking around yelling for Flynn. <laughs> right? And then like you finally you get into the thing and then you open up the box and then Flynn's in there finding the box uh, with the book in hand. You got it! I found it! <laughs> it's a really good book! It was stuck! <laughs> Like, oh, okay, there you are. And she's going to pick her up and is like, all right, you got your book? You got your book? Okay. All right, and she's going to plop her down on the bed and she's going to kind of like ruffle her head a little bit. And then she's going to look around. All right, girls. Miss Pimmy's got some fun tonight. So I need you to behave, okay? Meeting up with a boy. And I'm going to need you to behave. If everyone behaves, you will get privileges. All right. Privileges mm -hmm. are good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You will understand in a couple of years when you are in my position. So, we going to be good tonight? I I think they must because of the positive. All right, that's my girls. Pim's girls are best girls, right? Cabin 6 for the win. All right, you guys get some good sleep. <laughs> you got anything? No, I was just making note of cabin six. <laughs> yes, Miss Pim. <laughs> I'm watching Flynn type the lisp in, in chat. Is so good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah, and oh. Pim's going to give everyone a big smile. And then she's going to flip the light off, turn around, shut the door, and slam her back against the door and just... <gasps> All right, let's go! <laughs> and she's just going to start heading towards, like, the common area. All right. How's high noon? Like, where do we find high noon at this, um, the sun just went down, it's dusk, the camp is a camp, I'm calling it a night. Apparently, Pim has plans to, like, have a little bit of a party. Is it a bonfire? Yeah, it's going to be like a little bonfire out in the woods away from any of the um, important upper-ups. Well, that works out kind of perfectly because I think we're, I think uh, High Noon's already heading out to the woods and game. Firewood and such set up for for the little party that's about to happen. He's getting he's getting drinks together, he's getting the wood, he's getting all the supplies for making the fire and just waiting for everyone else to show up. Yeah, absolutely. Um Counselor Tarkus is already out there gathering firewood. He's been chopping it all day. Hey, Tarkus, Dark, what's a good spot for some uh, some trees? Right, I, I, I need a little bit more wood. I think Tarkus, um, the, this version of him, um, has the prosthetic arm, but it's a very, it's much more, and it has a hook, you know? It's very similar to what, what we had in the early 90s or the late 80s as prosthetics. But, like, he's, like, chopping the wood. And he's still doing a bang-up job for it. Of it. And he's just, oh, he waves at high noon and walks up to you. And he's just like, I got a bunch of it down at the cabin. He's just like, have you heard about... And he's just like, have you heard about the sightings at Cabin 13? Uh, what kind of sightings, dude? I mean, I've definitely heard some creepy things about this place, but, uh, no, we have to be a little bit more specific. Ever since I got back from the path, I know people have been looking at me like I'm seeing things. They say I see monsters out of all the bushes, and sometimes that's true because those bushes are scary and we really need to get them trimmed, but... The important thing is, it's like, I know a monster when I see one. 
And she's like, have you heard the legend of the big bad wolf? I mean, I hear a lot of stories about wolves, man. I mean, come on, L look, look, look at me. I mean, I, I get to hear all those stories all the time. I mean, the big bad wolf, the feet, uh, the things that take your uh, children out from under you, that that kind of crap. I, I I hear it all the time. I mean, he's just like so. I it's gonna sound crazy. And it's going to feel like it's going to sound crazy, but I know you guys are having that little shindig tonight and that's fine. You, the younger camp counselors, I'm not invited. It was one time. It wasn't my fault. Like, but it's like I'm hanging with Rupert and Soki tonight. We got a little like extra occult practice going on tonight guys we're gonna try to talk to peanut oh well i i, I think yeah I, I think uh me and ivo finally are heading out there at some point too so maybe we'll maybe we'll just like maybe we'll show up on time for it guys like if if I can drag you away from your little party, meet us at cabin 13 at midnight. We're going to talk to the dead. <laughs> and like, well, talk to his eyes well, flash, give a shot. like, green. Uh, he, he like loads you up your arms full of sticks. And I need to just uh, take them, just kind of look tilting his head at Tarkus, still confused about the eyes. This end good or bad? Is this good or bad? Uh -oh. Okay. I think you just hear, like, Tarkus, like, laughing to himself. Again, this isn't actually Tarkus. This is Midnight's nightmare of everybody working at a camp version of Tarkus, so. As he begins chuckling to himself, it's just like, you should really stop by. Uh, okay, yeah, I, I, I will. Huh. Weird dude. Uh, high noon, when you walk back, you don't step in it, but you see wolf traps all over the, f all over the ground, just underneath, um, like a layer of fallen leaves. Little Miss oh, Flynn yeah, must be on. careful. You guys need to not set stuff like this just out it. Come on, man. Where do we find Ivo? Oh. Um. I guess she she goes to Howl to buy some weed because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she heard it helps break the ice. Absolutely. And and in this, huh? I was going to ask where was it if we had a location for it. No, I have no cards. You have no cards. I mean, I have cards, but, like, they don't work for this situation. I don't have a location, if that's 
what you mean. I have a card if you want it. Uh, it's cabin 20. All right. Let's meet cabin 20. All right. So you're meeting up in cabin 20. Is there anything special about cabin 20? Because I know cabin 13 is said to be haunted, but... Maybe cabin 20 is the nice one because it's closest to the lake. So it's potentially the only one that has like a really nice view. Yeah, all right. Absolutely. Oh, 20 is apparently arts and crafts. That That's right. 20 is the arts and crafts one. Um, counselors K and Forge. Um, work at cabin 20. Um, yeah, so do you uh, are you guys meeting this night like right now? Cause, oh, yeah, of course icebreaker by the weed for the party So are you buying the smuggled goods or is Howell buying the smuggled goods from you? I'm oh What does this card say? But Howl's a dealer. And I just have some... Hmm. I mean, could I just buy it now? Like, that's how yeah, I absolutely. obtain that it? absolutely. That is how you have the smuggled good. That makes perfect sense. Okay. One second. I gotta check my list real fast. Oh, so this is Ivo. The room feels funny, and not just like not in the weird weed way. Like as you are grabbing this um bag, reality starts to split apart, like fabric fraying at the seams. Like as you open the bag, it's the what was definitely. In our world, um, in, in the Echo, weed is like a little flower that looks like a dried lily. And, like, Osiria keeps saying that they didn't make it up, but they did. We were here. Can you roll me a 20-sider? Oh, no, no, you you, you don't get to. It's, it's sabotage. This isn't a combat contest with it. Like, fluttering all around you are countless moths and it feels like you are losing pieces of yourself in this moment like and just like you are being pulled apart by just sorry by millions at this point of moths your body cannot be seen anymore and then you wake up and you're just staring at this bag of weed. How? Um, Ivo's been staring wide-eyed at this, at the weed that you just sold her for an alarming amount of time. How long until somebody, how long would you just let somebody stand there wide-eyed before you said something? I, <clears throat> I know I got good shit, so I'd probably let it happen for a solid five minutes or so. For like, hey. You good there? I know it's good, but like, come on, dude. That reaction was Vatna, the cosmic moth, sabotaged the weed. 
he went through the items that we had available. He sabotaged specifically the weed. <laughs> it was obviously the right choice. But I think how this, like, failure is going to work is... It... Is this Ivo's first time doing weed that you bought? Yes, as an ice absolutely. Okay, okay, absolutely. That's, that's so great. You that you think that that is how? Like, oh wait, do we? Um, do we think that it was a very very bad trip, and Ivo is still in that bad trip for the rest of this game? Or do we think that Ivo loved it, and is just fucking just down to party I think she's just like I think this is how it's supposed to go yeah fuck yeah so she'll just that's... she's just gonna do it again at the party mm -hmm. oh man you gotta get everybody smoking the fucking reality moths at the party <laughs> It's like spiking everything with fentanyl, isn't it? Like, you just, like, everybody's <laughs> expecting one kind of high, and you're about to get them nightmare high. Yeah. <laughs> so just remember, 2D had to take care of everybody in Toxic. And now 2D's <laughs> going to knowingly <laughs> give drugs to everybody. <laughs> Very good. Um, are you guys, like, friends? Is this the first time Howell and Ivo... No, it has to be, like, this is your first time doing drugs. Can I get that scene? I just, I, I had to interrupt it, um, to do the trap, but I do want to see you two RP, like, buying drugs. Was... Was Howell already in Cabin 20? I think Howell's doing that thing where he's leaning up against the wall. Because I know I'm the coolest camp counselor here. I have tattoos and nobody else does. Uh him? I like have I've... tattoos and I know I'm cool. <laughs> 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 So I was kind of just like, hey, Howl, um, I heard that you have some weed. Can I get some? Absolutely. I'm so happy you're here. I've been waiting for this. I've gotten everyone in this camp high, and you're next, my dude. Oh, cool. So follow me into the cabin, because I hide my weed in the bottom of the paint cans. And I'll walk you over, I'll pick up one of the cans and I'll twist the bottom off and a couple baggies will fall out. This is the good shit. All right, I'll take all of it. Yeah, all, yeah, let's go. All right, here's four bags for you. Do you want me to pop open any of their paint cans or you, this is your first time. You're gonna start with four, that's fine. Perfectly reasonable. Yeah, just... They have this whole bag of gummies. Yeah, we start big. So, that one ended... That was positive for Ivo. Ugh. So awkward, so beautiful. What is Howl's? Do we... Do we go, do we want to just continue from that scene and keep keep that scene going? Or do we want to move forward to the actual, like, party get-together? We can probably just go to the party. Like, Will, I'll screw up the paint cans again, put them back so they look like they're where they should be. And, like, all right, we got the goods. You lucky that you're having a blast already. And we're going to go. I got to meet up with Pim.
So does anyone have a location for where... Are we meeting up in the woods? No, that's where you went to get the, um... You went to the woods to get the wood. For the fire. Where are we having the bonfire? We Even if you don't... Like, if you have a location card, that would be great, but... Does anybody else have any location cards? Okay, let me check. I'm just... I'm trying to I have another last... one. It's also the woods, but it's a hidden, seemingly abandoned shack. That sounds great. We're going there. Oh, okay. Okay. So. Cut back in time. Like, as you guys are walking towards the hidden camp. This is rewind about an hour or two ago. You see camp, um, camper, pass, uh, you know, the little, little blue boy, four eyes, like eight with those glasses. No, I'd actually, I can't remember if he was like, is he, I don't think he's a nerdy camper. No, I think he said he was like the, stereotypical like too cool for school type oh that's right that's right he's edgy he's like edgy. He's, he's an edge lord oh god he, like instead of a duster it's just like it is a duster but he's wearing it like the you know like i wore a duster in high school <laughs> yeah okay okay yeah we get it like that's yeah, just like got his cigarette in his mouth and like we'll follow the camera's following him but he is unaware of the camera like he's got his like walkman on listening to like whatever absolute terrible country music comes out of um bone meal no it can't be it's three vampires and a goth girl like he's his edge lord and he's next to the shed too and he's got his back up against the door and then suddenly he falls inside as Cass stands up he sees ropes hanging from the roof with these deep hooks on them and they're hanging up all over the place Cass Nika is gonna roll for I'm, I'm gonna roll for you and Nika is gonna roll for cash sick I rolled a 20. Sorry, Cash. Um, Cass, give, like, in the RP, like, in the chat right there, tell us how you got up, looked at this place, and just, like, it wasn't scary at all. Like, this room was, wasn't terrifying in the least. All right. I'm trying to... It's just like, that's a negative one for, um, Cash. You, Cass, in the chat, um, make this more upbeat. You're fucking fine. Um, but you guys walk into the woods, you see the shack, and it is, like, you can, you know, during the day, sometimes, like, people, like, look in there, it's casting a bunch of shadows, but really... You guys have it set up to just look spooky so the campers don't go in there. It is kitted out for, like, the best ragers. Like, you guys got a nice fire pit out front. You've got a, um... You got a fridge inside that's just stocked with fucking tons of... Wait. Did pizza rolls exist in the 80s? It's just yes, like... Yes! Actually, they had, I think they, they did. I think they did. I've watched oh, wow. so many episodes 60s. of that stupid show. Yeah, I think they did. <laughs> like, fuck yeah. Oh, you yep. They were um, they, they, they were invented in the 60s and became major in 1985. Alright. Howl, because you, uh, because this is your turn setting the scene, what makes this place such a cool place to hang out? He, this this place is great because it looks spooky, keeps the campers away. We got the fire pit in there. If we go inside, 
that's where I keep another stash of the good shit. But it's just kind of out in the open because this is a cool cabin. It, like, I don't need to hide it here. And maybe we have, like, um, a pool or something in the back, too. And it's, like, the one pool on camp, but nobody goes near it because that thing's spooky. Everybody stays to the lake for swimming. Mm -hmm. All right. Fucking love it. So we all get here. The sun's going down. Um, You guys... Is it just you four, or are the other camp counselors here with you? I'd say there's probably more camp counselors. But, like, the cool ones. Like, it's more of a gathering of uh, closer friends. I, I definitely Patagon's here. Yeah, awesome. Oh, Akana apparently is also a camp counselor, but I don't know Fuck if Akana... Yeah. It, it's, she says camp ranger or counselor, but, like, do we think she's a narc? Ooh, depends. If she's older than us, and if she's a ranger, then yeah, she's a narc. Oh, no, she asked somebody to roll her a joint earlier, turns out. Oh, Not then a narc. She's cool, she can stay. <laughs> Which is good, because I would have been heartbroken. Because <laughs> Akana's my homie. Nika said big Janine Garofalo vibes. Okay. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> I want to be her. <laughs> okay. And Cash is also a counselor, and so is K, and so is Forge. What's the vibes going on? Um, it's like this is like the beginning before a horror movie starts getting horror -y. Are we still in Howl's scene? Yeah, well, we're still in Howlson, and also, is it does it go good or bad? Does this night go good or bad? Got three cards that popped up. I tried to play a positive first, but uh... okay, yeah, um, two positives, yeah. We'll do. Let me just do that. All right. So yeah, the night goes well. Like, um, no sign of whatever. So nobody is. This is the last night before we find out about the um missing. Well, there's a body, but we don't know where it is. So yeah, what's what's the scene here? Um, if we did a quick um, snapshot of each of you hanging out at this party. Oh wait, getting high on the the moth of what is the um the acid trip? You know the um the montage of the kids taking drugs. So I think it, it definitely starts out, I'm handing out joints at the door to everybody who comes in. Just kind of greeting everyone. Like, hey, what's going on? This is for you. Go get a drink. Go have fun. Then after I hand everything out, I'll go find Pim. And, I don't know, we'll head out back, do some smooching or something. <laughs> <laughs> some smooching or something. The, the, the <laughs> best way to fucking um, make it not awkward for like scenes like that is to say words like smooching. Absolutely. <laughs> We're gonna go boink. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, bump uglies is the best way to phrase it. Bump uglies. 
Yeah, just uh, there's found never each been other. anything funnier than bumping uglies. It's such a <laughs> horrible way to put it. I hate it. It's so gross. <laughs> Maybe the way you do it. But no, that's the way it's said. Bumping uglies. I, I think midnight is. Hi, dude, brothers. Hi, handy out. Uh, handing out the drinks and since he can't handle this the smell of, of smoking weed he teaches people a trick about how to make a kind of cocktail of of the beer and and a tea a tea from the weed yeah pim's going to uh like basically run into the montage shot with a drink in hand, tipsy, and, like, run over to Howl as he's, like, handing stuff out. And she's just gonna, like, wrap herself, like, around his neck. And immediately just start, like, schmoozing on the side of his face. And just, like, you're like, oh, hurry up. You gotta finish what you're doing so we can go out back. Mm-hmm. Ivo, how how are you handling your first time on drugs with these new people? So she she still has like the bag of her own weed and she keeps like staring at it and then staring at high noon and kind of going back and forth trying to figure out how to approach him. And Eventually she does, and she she just takes out a clump and puts it in his hand. It's not rolled, it's literally just a clump of weed. And then goes, hi, hi, noon. Oh, hi, hi, how's it going? This is for you. Oh, thank you. I, I appreciate it. Uh, so, so we still meet you up at cabin 13 later? Sure. Oh shit, we can, um, we can go to that scene right now if you guys want to. Like, midnight with a, cl with a handful of, um, the weed like um this midnight um there is something off about this like not high noon midnight there is something off about this like there's a moment of just like like shaking your head situation um i'm thinking the way that like some dogs get right before they sneeze like that mm -hmm. weird little noise like and everything feels wrong for just a split second like and the um something is off with what you would just hand it like that weed that something about the dust on it but then it kind of like fades away like it just like wears off And like, um, so we head to cabin 13. Um, and I'm, I'm changing the order by just skipping over you, Pim. We can go back to you to do another scene. I want to give Midnight and, um, Ivo a scene. You guys get outside it around 1158. And inside you hear chanting and the windows are flashing green and as you approach the door and just before like you get in you hear a deep growl coming from the forest uh that's not normal to I still even uh, let's get inside. Uh, 
Yeah. As you guys just like rush through the door, uh, is it the situation like open the door and slam it behind you and put your back up against it style? You know what I'm talking about? I think so, yeah. Inside, you see the flat, like the lights turn on, and um, you have Rupert and Soki, who are the kid, like teenage versions of themselves, like very into like the occult. Like they both have cloaks on. They are um currently they both have flashlights with green um translucent foil oh I mean not foil but the um saran wrap. And they're like, Oh what you guys ruined it We were gonna have him back Are you guys it's like I are, are you okay? Are you okay, Mr. High Noon? Uh are you okay? Wait, wasn't Tarkus going to be here? Did, did, did you mention Tarkus? I'm sorry. Mr. Fighter. No, Tarkus is not in here. I thought oh. Tarkus was sticking. Uh, I'm, but... I'm, I'm going to make a call here. Negative. You he outside, you hear Tarkus screaming. Um. I'm gonna roll for Tarkus. Nika's gonna roll for Osiria. I rolled a seven. Osiria did still win win, because Osiria has plus six. Um you out the window, I mean, outside, midnight, hear the sound of Tarkus being ripped limb from limb. As Soki and, um, Soki and Rupert cling to, um, you two's, like, legs as they hear the howling of a wolf and the screaming of of Tarkus. Uh, actually, High Noon, what do you do? You hear Tarkus screaming out there. And Ivo. Ivo and mm -hmm. High Noon. I think the first reaction is to get Soki and Rupert to hide somewhere. Rupert's just like crawling all over you. It's he's doing like he is still just a cat, so he's doing that thing where he's like clawing your back and it's really hurting. Ah, no, stop it, stop it, hide, hide this thing. Uh, uh, Something's happening, just uh, quiet, 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 hide. We don't want to alert whoever's out there. Like, you see, Soki, like pull out his flashlight with the green tip and he's just like he clicks it on he's pretending it's a lightsaber he's just making the noises he's like he's like adventure um ivo and high noon you guys see soki is making a run for the window he's gonna jump out and try to fight the big bad wolf soki you idiot get back here he definitely will try to go for him but i don't think he's gonna make it um, Ivo can try as well. Um, she like tries to run. You know, when you're in a dream and you're trying to like run or hit someone, it just feels like molasses. No, 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 no. He's like absolutely. Ah, uh, does he make it? Like, does he make it out the window? Oh shit! All right, Soki. He, he's in the chat. Not forgive us. So she, she just yelled, "You can't stop me!" To you. <laughs> Do you dart through her legs? Like, Ivo's too, like, zooted right now to actually react quickly. <laughs> just fucking zod right the fuck up. Just like, alright. Just like, like that, that howling's not actually happening, right? 
<laughs> just howl along. It's like, all right. I love this song. <laughs> Fucking Silky jumps out into the night. I guess we'll find him tomorrow. Or what's left? Or or what's left? Absolute. Okay. Um. Has anybody got a scene while that's happening in the same night, or do we want to like move forward? Like we could do a hangover situation if we wanted to. Yeah, we could probably. Move forward, hangover scene. All right. I'm picturing the cafeteria situation, like the mess hall, next day. Um, and I want to give you guys this scene. Whoever wants it, um, the negative or the positive that comes out of it, up in the air. Midnight has his two negatives, so the other thing. It is a scene where the, it is definitely Pim, like sitting on Howell's lap situation kind of like thing the next day where everybody else has a hangover but Pim's got hickeys <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and it's just like you Patagon and um not <laughs> Patagon and K Forge like some of them definitely have hangovers and then it's just like Midnight and Ivo, I'm sorry, High Noon and Ivo come walking into the um, mess hall covered in blood. High Noon is covered in scratches all up and down his back and front from um, Rupert. And it's just like the deadpan stare from both of them. Tim's just gonna look at uh, High Noon and just be like, oh my god, bud, what happened to you? Can't find Silky. What? You lost a camper? We... <sighs> there was something out there last night. And Silky... Chased after it. What? What was out there? Did you see it? No, just heard howling and Tuck as he he was screaming. How high did you get last night, either. buddy? Not as high as I would have liked. Unfortunately, I didn't um, hear anything. I was busy. Anyway, have you alerted everybody that you can't find Soki? I mean, that's what I'm doing right now, I guess. I don't know. It, it... Should we go, go go look for him before we all lose our jobs? Yeah, that's... Yeah. Ivo, how are you feeling? You look like shit. The noises haven't stopped. Oh, yeah. Hit you hard, huh? Oh. Pim's gonna turn to Howl and just kind of grab his face and be like, What did you give her? It was just the regular stuff. I didn't know it was gonna be your first time using it. Oh my god. But you're gonna come back for more, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Cool. Um. But yeah, bec yeah, because that's positive. Um. I think yeah, we can get a hold of Pollux and Caster. They can make an announcement. Are we putting together a search squad? Like, are we like, is that what we're doing? We've I think got... maybe should we kind of keep it hush hush and just like the four of us go looking should we go looking should we be like big big search thing? what do we think uh, because it's positive for you I think everybody's going to agree with what you suggest well I would say that since it is my best friend who was there and lost a camper we're gonna first attempt to go look ourselves and see if we can't locate him before everyone knows that he lost a camper so yeah. i would suggest the four of us go <laughs> this is like high noon and imo show up it's just like i can't I can't find Soki. It's just like the Tarkus is all over the forest. Let's go look for Soki. <laughs> it's just like, okay, well, maybe not. I, I forgot about the Tarkus being dead all over the place part. Well, all he told me was that Tarkus was screaming. That's fair. You didn't actually say that. That's that's my bad. Yeah, all he said was Tarkus is screaming. Oh, I guess High Noon and Ivo, do you two think that you would have discovered the body? I mean, I think I think maybe we might have just found a blood patch, and we did, it, and that's it. I think. Yeah. And... I don't think the whole body. Okay, like so maybe like... a hand. <laughs> so you guys saw blood. Uh, excellent. So the four of you head back out to. All right. Do Ivo or Howell, do either one of you have a scene in mind? Because I have a scene I would like to pitch you, but if you guys have a scene, I would like to, I'd love to hear yours. I have an object. Oh shit, what's your object? The first body. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my god. <laughs> Alright, where do we find it? Do I play it? Yeah, do go for do it. This? Like, yeah, we can do we can do that scene. And is this? Are we assuming that this is Tarkus's body? This has to be, right? Or yeah. did somebody die before? Okay, we're going with Tarkus. All right. Oh, that that's a, such a good Ivo scene because like you do do some of the like playing with dead people, right? Like you have some of the necromantic yeah. ability. Yeah, I thought so. So yeah, you guys walking through the forest, stumbling, like, no, you're all camp counselors, you can walk through the forest, eh, except for maybe Pim. Did Pim wear heels in the forest? No, right? I don't have heels! I don't wear shoes! I would design heels. Well, I, Final Fantasy four, 11 and 4, no wait, sorry, 12 and then 14 solved that for us. How do bunnies wear shoes? True. And I mean, Fran is God, so. But, so as you guys are walking through the forest, really early in the morning, like dew still on the thing, there's that really weird autumn light, like through the um, fallen leaves. And then you see it, a big puddle of blood in Tarkus's body. And we can investigate this body for the C I um things that an investigation would yield from this based on the killer. Firstly, wh whatever did this like was vicious and um Tarkus bled a lot. A lot a lot. 
um, his arms and legs have been removed, he died screaming. There are literally a puddle of blood underneath him right now. But yeah, otherwise, um, that there's your scene. I if you guys do ask the right questions, I have some more information for you. Can all of us interact? Or? Absolutely, all four of you are here. Uh, Pim's going to fall into the blood. She is going to walk, uh, and she's going to turn around to see what everybody else is, like, looking at. And she's going to trip, and she's just going to fall directly into the giant pool of blood. And she's going to be completely covered, and she's going to try to, like, crab crawl away from the body. And she's going to be like that, like... <laughs> Oh my god, 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 And she's gonna be like looking at her hands, she's gonna be like, ew, 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 oh my god, he's dead, he's really dead! Oh, ew, 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 and then she's gonna kind of stop for a second. And then she's gonna kind of, kind of twitch for a minute. And some of that blood is gonna kind of disappear a little. It's gonna sort of almost absorb, maybe? And she's gonna suddenly become slightly calmer. And she's gonna look to the rest of them and just go, what the heck happened to Tarkus? Told me a story about the big bad wolf. I guess he wasn't lying. Hal's gonna run over and help him out of the blood and then try to get a better look at, like, this is super gross and I'm trying not to throw up right now. Is he's Hal's dry heaving, oh, but I sick. need to know, like, I don't know, can I tell anything? Like, we've been counselors for a little bit now do i know like what animal may have done this or is it not an animal i know oh sick all right um i need somebody to give me a positive or a negative so like if it's a positive, he'll get a good clue. If it's a negative, he's going to get a red herring. Oops. So, I look positive. All right. Um, you look at the corpse and it's like, yeah, it looks like whatever did this must have been like huge and very powerful like you've heard the legends of the big bad wolf as well and it's just like and you've heard tale that they've been collecting limbs all over the echo but it's too clean these limbs weren't ripped off they were cleft off i think the big bad wolf was this precise this is kind of spooky what, what do you mean it like you you've heard the stories like the the big bad wolf rips people fucking apart dude this it's it's too clean it it was cut it wasn't ripped That is weird. Definitely heard howling last night, but...
Mm, okay, we've got a. F what's the? What's a good? What's a good last scene before the turn? Um, can Ivo have another moment where reality is kind of again? Absolutely. Like, it just keeps getting worse. Like, she's standing in the pool of blood, staring at the body. And I guess the moths are just ripping her apart again. Or maybe the body. Hmm. Oh, they can rip the body apart. And, like, you stop seeing Camp Counselor Tarkus, and you see, like, legitimate Tarkus, like, laying there. Um... What? What are we after? What? Is there information we want out of this? Or? Maybe another clue? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, um... You three, does Ivo get a clue that leads her to the killer? Like, positive or negative? Like, the negative would be a false lead. A positive would be just exactly that. Mm. Uh, okay, all right. So that's that's actually fun. Because that implies you can get a clue, Ivo. You just, you need some of that moth dust. It's like you start to see, um, a flash of, um, Tarkus's last moments. You see him walking through the, um, the woods on his way over to um Soki and Peanut's cabin I mean, cabin. Uh cabin thirteen. He's just like, alright, they're gonna put on a little seance. He's got like a Ouija board under one arm. He's got a bundle of um sticks under the other. He's got um He gets close to the cabin. You can just see the cabin and then he looks to his left and sees... No, he has to look to his right. His left is an, a fake arm. He looks to his right and he sees an axe coming down and it hits him on the shoulder and cl um, cuts it clean off. When you snap to it, like you can see like blood on your shirt where you got cut right there. And it, like, you could hear tearing... Of fa you could hear what sounded like fabric tearing apart. I think, terrifyingly, even because it's negative, and like Ivo is starting to realize she's in a nightmare. And now the fun part of the game. Everybody right-click your cards and flip them over. Your positives and your negatives. Okay. So, we need... Midnight has plus five bad. Um, Pim has plus eight bad. I right, good. Um, Howell has six and Ivo has two bad. So we have to do this like we have to do because of the way that this game works let me bring this to the front we have to do pims 
that at some point hair leads to a bad decision and because of the blood marks on it, that means somebody dies. Um, we have to do that one. And um, Midnight, we have to do Death After an Unpleasant Struggle or Mayhem, A Cold-Blooded Score Settled. Well, we have the death set up, so Death After an Unpleasant schedule. Struggle. Uh, guess what's happening to Soki. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> uh, rip. Okay, so now we just go around again. Um, and the good and bad decisions the same way. But at some point, and anybody can do it, but at some point we need to see, um, mayhem. Uh, Tara leads to a bad decision and we need to see a death after an unpleasant struggle. We need to see those ones, but if you, um, Howell and Ivo, if you can think of, way, of a way for paranoia, that thing you stole has been stolen, I don't know if you can, or paranoia, someone is hunted down. Like, absolutely, it's funny that you got two paranoias. And if how you can think of a showdown not sure how if you could or failure someone or something survives against the odds huh, that doesn't sound bad so we know like where we are as the camera comes back up is Ivo all four of you are sta standing in the forest um there was a corpse at your feet like oh <laughs> hold on I got it I got one thing Sorry, everybody. I had to type a question. And if it wasn't to you, you're probably not the murderer. Okay. You're all standing around, like, looking at this corpse. Ivo, like, piecing things together the reality you see the axe cutting through it's just like that wasn't the big bad wolf at all and then you look and you see a thread running from Tarkus like th underneath the leaves and it looks bright red and it's leading right to Pim and while everybody else is looking at the body you see Pim coated in blood all right Pim how do you attack Ivo, and does she get away, everybody? So, Pim covered in blood um, and having the the previous situations with B, um, all of that blood is starting to, like, perfectly coat her body and uh, anybody who's looking at her now has seen her eyes completely go over red. As she uh, looks up at Ivo, and as soon as she realizes that Ivo knows what's going on, she's like completely taken over by impulse. And um, Pim's uh, tentacles reach out and wrap around Ivo and immediately start trying to take off her head. And she like lunges at her. All right, Ivo, that's a scene given to you. So you decide how it ends, positively or negatively. Um, my mic 
about my mic, but my headset cut out. Can you say all of that again for me? I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so Pim is now completely coated I in the, the blood. Whole thing. <laughs> it's okay. Once you noticed uh, that Pim was uh, Tarkus's killer, um, Pim's uh, connection to B is uh, still very strong. And uh, the blood has now coated her body. And if you were looking at her eyes, her eyes have now glazed over completely red. And um, when she realizes that you have found her out, um, her tentacles just like reach out of her back and wrap around you and are now trying to just tear you apart and rip your head off. And she just lunges upwards towards you. Uh, doubt it here would help me, but I'll look. Um, you could, you can use one of the cards in your hand if you want to, or you can just, um, play a positive and somehow you get out of it. Um, like even like if, if you want it to be positive, you, you can have it positive. If you want it to be negative, it can be negative. If you want to die right here, you can. Um, but also if you want Howl or Midnight to like play the positive for you, like in them try to save you, that's fine with me as well. Or fight your way out of it. Is Ivo still aware that this is a dream, or has that already left again? I... Uh, whatever tells the better story, you think. Like, if you... If you want Ivo to be aware that this isn't really Pym... That we are in somebody's nightmare. If you guys want, if that's the story we want to tell, like fight our way out of Midnight's nightmare, wake him up. I'm perfectly fine telling that story. Um. I'm gonna say. I, I have... Oh, go. No, go ahead. Absolutely. I don't want to hijack it. <laughs> You know, oh no, hijack it. Let it rock. It's not hijacking, it's just playing. Um Can I do a positive with trying to oops, I clicked it. Oh, that's um fine. And I guess can I just like yell at Pim like hey like snap out of it get a hold of yourself like this this isn't real this isn't blood rage I think like hell and, like... rage. Just be like Pim, you just get like even bigger, even squelchier. Yeah. <laughs> I will, like, you squeeze, but she slips from your grasp as she's like calling for that and just like does that, does the horror movie crab walk backwards into the forest. And now all Pim can hear in her head is just like, it was only ever just us. Like, just, like, weird shit being said in her head, and she's just, like, freaking out, and she just, like, sees everybody right now as, like, the bad guy. They're all just trying to hurt me. They are all just gonna turn on me. <laughs> like, they know. They are the enemy. Pim is now very much, like, locked into almost her own nightmare. All right, here we go. This is gonna be real cool. So, Ivo, as you hit the gun, you can look over... And you see High Noon, and he keeps flashing back and forth between, like, 
high noon in the person that you know as midnight like your crew member midnight and like he is seeing his best friend like best friend forever like having being a murderer somebody who has ripped limbs off of people people that they know and love like you like as he is just like staring at him knowing full well like that Soki is already gone it's like you know that this is this is high this is midnight's nightmare and you have one more chance to wake him up like this is not actually happening but everybody's gonna feel this like it is All right, Pim, what scene do you have for High Noon and or Howl? So I'm going to say kind of a combo in a way here. Like Pim's going to turn to the other two now that Ivo has gotten away. And uh, she's going to look between High Noon and Howl. And there's going to be enough of him kind of left bouncing around in there that she's going to try to, like, kind of keep herself from going immediately for high noon. And she's going to refocus over to Howl. And she's going to remember little bits and pieces from her memory of the other dream she had um, from the heart game where he killed her and then he used her as a fucking puppet <laughs> to kill her friends or to try to kill her friends and she's gonna go straight for him and she's going to basically put all of those tentacles into a point and harden them and try to spear straight through his heart. All right, how the issue seen? How's it end? Positively or negatively? Um, let's see. Well, I have that. Someone or something survives against the odds. That's fair. So I guess that's going to be positive and i'll i absolutely get skewered but she doesn't get me in the heart me like the just to the side or i managed to dodge out of the way just a little bit it takes a chunk out of me but i don't die we keep going absolutely um yeah, um, Pim, do you have a scene for High Noon, or do you want High Noon to give you a scene? Um, I'd say let let him let him do something. Let him make a move. Got anything in mind, man? Uh, am I doing something? You say I'm doing something for Pim. Uh, for Pim, you could do anything. Like you could try to help out Ivo, help out Howl. Um. Attack Pim, run away. Well, you, you said he was flashing between midnight and high noon. I, I think for a few moments he is just frozen there. You just see constant expressions changing between yeah, between in anger and anger, shock, and just pure sad the sadness at what he's watching. And I think he is going to approach Pim and just try to hug her. Oh, Pim, 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 Pim. Look at the top on the screen right there. He's coming at you for a hug, but his terror has led to a bad decision. And I think it has to lead to a death after an unpleasant struggle. Oh, good night. <laughs> Oh, I love you, man. <laughs> Do me a salad and kill Midnight. 
Oh, God. So what's going to happen is she is so... Oh, sorry. Do me a silent and kill High Noon. Yeah. She's uh, so consumed with hatred over Howl, and, like, she still has him speared right now. Um, And she's kind of got his, like, face in her hand, and Midnight or High Noon approaches, and she's kind of caught off guard and she turns around and sees him with his arms out and instead of seeing it as an invitation for a hug she sees it as a threat and she's just going to take one of those tentacles and spear straight up through underneath his jaw and through the top of his head really fast and then almost stop and everything is still. So she still has Howl pinned to the ground. And now she has one tentacle through High Noon, who is now just dangling there. And everything is just still as she realizes kind of what she's done. And she's just kind of frozen. Right. So... So, Midnight, as you're speared through your jaw by, um, this fucking, by, by definitely Pim, like, you start to realize something. This is, like, this is not your past with Pim. Like, you two never actually, like, we're camp counselors. This is like, like, like you—you you never smoked weed with Ivo at in Camp Twenty. Like that didn't happen. Like so, midnight. Your eyes begin to shift, and we switch away from high noon into. It's like into um midnight. Like you see your shadow in front of you. Um as like you're casting your shadow as it is hooked with the um with Pam. But you are okay for a moment. It's just like How do you I actually I think it's just straight up you fall away from it, and you see High Noom's corpse hanging in the sky from Pim. You are now midnight, laying on the floor. For the record, on uh, on the ground. You look over. You are wearing a um, camp lock stitch like t-shirt. It's definitely um, no. It, yeah, because you guys all wore your camp lock stitch uniform last night, so it's all like a too tight of a polo midnight. Um, you have khaki pants on. Um, Howl speared through with multiple like blood tentacles. Ivo is safe, but like she's also covered in blood. It's not hers, it is Pim's. And, um,. You are confronted with a giant mess of Pim and B. How's Midnight doing? I, th I think, it, you see, Midnight, he is the one that was more angry, just looking up at what's going on. Just slow, slowly pushing him up, himself up from the ground, and I actually have an item I want to use from a cud. Second. Yeah, go for it. Right now, I want you to give Pim a scene, and Pim decides how it goes for for her. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. As long as we're all, like, I just want yep. us all to be right there. Yep. Yep. 
he, he is going to pull out some food from his pocket, eat it, and say, I'm sorry, Pim. And stop breathing fire at her. Yeah, after, just like, you're just gonna burn Pim? At least the uh, at least the tendril that is around around Hall, if nothing else, that that's the focus probably. Okay, but absolutely. How it turns out is definitely up to Pim. So how does this work? So so if it goes positively, does it, it goes positively for me? Yes, if it goes positively, it's positively for you. This is your scene. Like, um, negatively, he frees Howl. I assume positively, you keep Howl. Well, now midnight is a threat. Positively for me. What's it? What's it look like? Like how? Like so? Midnight threw some food in his mouth and started breathing fire. You have howl uh, pinned by like. Is it your fingers just growing really long? Are we doing like, uh, is it Lust from Full Metal Alchemist? Full Metal Alchemist. It's um, basically like almost Slender Man type ten, uh, like tentacles that like come out of her oh. back. Oh, okay, so not she's... the fingers. Yeah, so it's, it's the same tentacles that come out when she's using Demon Days. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. So, and how that looks positively for me. So he breathes fire, but I have picked up Howl and put him in front of it. Mm. Mm. Hey, yeah. Howl, how you doing? It's having a bad time, man. I'm stabbed. I'm on fire now. You but I do have a gonna card lose that I could... Definitely gonna lose my job, dude. This is <laughs> awful. I can't sell weed to campers anymore. I'm screwed. Drugs are bad, kids. That's what this whole episode's about. <laughs> At least you still have cool tattoos. <laughs> this is true. I got that's the one thing going for me. That's oh, like, he's like <laughs> roasting him specifically to get rid of them. <laughs> You're not I'm cool enough with for these. <laughs> <laughs> what was the what was the card that you had? I had one. It's. <laughs> It's to get away with murder. I'm not going down alone, man. <laughs> I, just... I don't know how that works where it's going positive for Pim, though. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. Your need to get away with murder. I, I mean, you you're getting away with her murder. Like you killed her before, but yeah. Do you just pretend to be dead again? Yeah, oh like, for sure. Yeah, it's just howl screaming, being roasted like a marshmallow. In like, as midnight's breathing fire on him, Tim, just like he's dead. Finally, just a husk in your hands. Well, in your tendrils. He doesn't even have a heartbeat left. She's gonna bring him in for a quick smooch. And then she's just gonna chuck his body into the woods. You definitely hit a tree. Oh, I, I hit a couple of them. Like, crack. And you hit the ground, and then you just... There's silence. Silence. And then positive. As you hear the voice in your head, it's just like, don't worry, I got you. I got you. He's just like, it's just a dream. It's just a dream. Okay. Okay, it's just a dream. But this is still bad, right? Like, that needs to die. It's like, if that thing gets out, you're all in some trouble. I think it's going to be, it's about over for you. But. 
you need to wake that one up. We need to wake that one up. And, like, you get the, like, the pull from one of your tattoos, like, puppeting you. Like, motioning towards midnight. Okay, okay. So, I'm... Haven't used this yet. I'm gonna pull out a bullet. And with the blood that is seeping out of me, I'm gonna write Pim's name on it. And then I'll load it into that spooky gun I got. And I'll fire. It is the plot for Halloween games where Howell and Pim are in them. Is we just keep killing Pim? It's tradition now. And we're just gonna keep trying to kill each other through the rest of eternity. That is that is our relationship. Midnight. Okay. Make out, kill each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a real that's a real rough situation. Midnight, this is your nightmare. You see Howl like pull a gun on Pim and like there are two versions of this. Like, he pulls the trigger, and, like, you literally, you're making eye contact with Pim as the bullet goes through her temple and blows out the other side. And I'm talking, like, the most gruesome version of that sniper elite style. Like, the hollow points situation. There's nothing left of the left side of Pim's face. And, like, that is going to stick with you. Like, that as a nightmare is going to be carved into you. Or, does it end the other way and you take the bullet? Oh, I know. Or, like, or you, like, how would you rewrite it? This is your nightmare. Do you, do we think it's a role? Honestly, I think this has to go, like, his usual nightmares go, in a, in a sense. I, I, I. I... I think everyone does have to die. So he, he has to watch Pim get shot. Oh, fucking sick. All right. Oh, I like Flynn's idea. Midnight's Nightmare apparently had, like, and then we see Howl, like, body gives out, like, falls limp. Um, Midnight, how it, what's the reaction for you right now? Like, him hits the ground in front of you, like, blown to hell. What is what is your stance right now? Like, where are you in the woods? I think at this point he's just kneeling down because he just watched I watched his he he contributed to killing Hal and he just watched a close friend get killed and there's That's nothing right. he could do about it. All right, Ivo, this is like I, everybody else should have four. Yeah, wait. Everybody else has four. Ivo has one more coming. So you see all of that happen like right in front of you. You do know that this is a dream. You can feel it like Beeromancy, from your time spent in, um, in Yoke, in the library, it feels like Stitchcraft from, like, your time spent with Katori, and, like, you do have a bit of sewing to your own nature. And she's like, it's about to settle in on Midnight, and he is going to the, um, Midnight 
does Midnight come out of this with any chance of hope or not? Because Midnight's big thing as a character is he, like, his secondary form is a, like, a hope spirit. Did this... Can you think of a way to, like, st stop him from losing all hope? Or do we want the next time Midnight plays this month, do we want him to be hopeful or do you want to watch it die? As, like, not as oh. Ivo. Like, Ivo can do either one. You can save him or you can, like, not be able to. That's fine. I'm asking you, the player, less than you, the character. So I want her to attempt. I want her to, like, grab his face and be like, look at me, look at me. None of this is real. And I need you to trust me. Should we roll if it works or not? What do you think, Midnight? Do we want to do the roll? Hmm. You know what? Let's go. Let's go with the roll. All right. So I don't know what my answer would be about it, but let's go with the roll. So what we think it's a 20 sider and just like just I have a rolls of 20 sided quest rules like 11 or higher is a success T the tough choice failure catastrophe Yeah, let's go with it. All right, Ivo, give me that 20 sider. Yeah. Oop. Oh wait, can't I just click I do love the clicking. Sixteen's pretty good. Like, yeah. At midnight, if it's a success, if she can shake you awake. I, I, I think... Midnight looks at Ivo for a moment, looks a, a bit surprised because this nightmare usually ends with everyone dead and him all alone. So seeing someone still there, he just sta stands up, smiles and says, I, I guess if even this nightmare can get better still can win. Silky comes walking out of the forest. And this is like, he's got a dog on a leash. Not a dog on a leash. He's like walking next to the big bad wolf. Oh, and they just kind of wave at you. And then we all wake up. It's gonna it would it's gonna be a fucking surreal wake up call for all of you. Like Also, they trapped so many fucking places in this game that you guys just didn't go to. Was uh There's a couple places that I, I have that I'm going to show that I'm wondering if they were among them. That lake was so fucking trapped. <laughs> that lake was so haunted. Oh, good thing I didn't use it. Yeah. <laughs> that lake was so haunted. <laughs> oh my god! Like the uh, lake was, the lake was like like every single but every single character was haunting the lake at some point. Um. Oh my god. I think I, it was. It would would have been rough. I actually really like. That's why I was mentioning Patagon being a lifeguard, just because I like lifeguard Patagon. So cute. I'm picturing his whole beak covered in sunscreen, by the way. And if you're oh, not, you're yeah. wrong. Yes, yeah, so good. <laughs> his little whistle. Beep beep. I think, yeah. So, um. Where do you wake up? Uh, in your beds. In the silver thimble. Um. And. The, oh, I saw the villains were at... So, a couple of things. I mean, 
the tilt cards um it was the pre tilt is where the villain cards were hiding like i was having them hiding but you guys just at, at the start were not saying anybody was doing bad like you guys just kept saying positive 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 except for me except for you <laughs> So it's just like we didn't end up with them, but like this place was trapped as hell. Vatna um sabotaged the drugs. Cass fell into a bit of um Cash's nightmare, but it did not work out. Cash was perfectly fine. I mean, Cass is perfectly fine. He was just like playing around like it was a jungle gym on those hooks. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> he got in there and it turned out to be you guys' this cool like um Fucking dorm party, not the hellscape that I was advertising it as. <laughs> it's just like, there's hooks hanging from the ceiling. Rolls a natural 20. And they're fucking awesome. You know what's on those hooks? Beef jerky. Sick. Free jerky. <laughs> but yeah, um... So yeah, midnight. You're gonna wake up in a hopeful state of mind. Um, after everything that happened, like literally yesterday, time is starting to lose a lot of its meaning lately. Like when you, like you guys were hunting the big bad wolf and it didn't work out for you, and then like, and now you just saw her again. But then the end, it ended with Soki and her walking up as friends. That seems wild. What does that mean? <laughs> and Howell's got to stop shooting people in the head. Can't stop, won't <laughs> stop. <laughs> We're going to have a conversation when I wake up. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Is um... We're, we're going to have a long conversation. <laughs> And now I know I gotta add fucking um, Ivo to the list of characters that I have, like, that do funky shit in dreams. Welcome to a, a list of the weirdest characters. I... Do you guys have, like, a scene you guys want to do after you, um... wake up or do we want to leave it there do we go hair of the dog it like <laughs> what do we do the four of you just meet midnight up in the just like, i think i think midnight definitely is going to try to find pim and just give her, actually give her that hug yeah i say let, let's let's go uh, mimosas or bloody mary's let's 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 hair of the dog this and chit chat for a second I feel like Midnight needs like a hundred hugs. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to call an emergency meeting at Fish Tanger is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to call all three of you and uh, rush you over to my workshop. And I'm just going to have like, I don't know, mimosas or Bloody Marys, whatever you're whatever your early morning drink of choice is <laughs> just prepared and ready to go I'm just be like, oh. the water. <laughs> there you go ready to go <laughs> <laughs> because of the nature of the way that we ended up doing this like i if we could put all you guys' points together but i don't think it's narratively going to make sense um because let's see well we can see if anything makes sense let me just let me see that. Uh, eight, um, nine, ten, fifteen. Oh God, <laughs> that that's a uh, that's all this. Someone dies and it isn't the killer's fault. That did happen. It did. Ben died and it was Howell's fault. Son of a bitch. 
But I still technically killed him, so I, I got what I wanted. So, we're here. But, uh, yeah, so I would say, you know, as soon as Midnight gets into the, uh, the workshop at Fish Tanger, she's just gonna walk right up to him and give him a big hug. <laughs> oh god, it wasn't just me. Yeah, no, I think that was a shared experience, and she's going to shoot daggers directly at Howl. I think I'm a fucking bad guy. I think you might be a bad guy. I'm sorry. It's two times now. I'm sorry. I killed you too, so I'm not sorry. It's I, I deserve that. You and did. I'll slam my mimosa. And she's going to keep eye contact with him as she also slams her mimosa. <laughs> I'll put my hands in the air. See, no guns. No guns. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I know where that other one goes. I will flash the hand cannon and, and make it disappear again. <laughs> and Pim's gonna turn to oh, Ivo. Oh, Ivo's and... drinking. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was just, she was just gonna say, should I try weed for real this time? No! You absolutely should. No. I support this. <laughs> I do not. Yeah, uh, something was wrong with the stuff you gave me, so I, I would probably say stay away from it for now. Or at least get a better dealer, and she's gonna kind of slap Howl up against the back of the head. I don't know. I lost the fucking rules book for a fiasco for some reason. Oh no! It's like I'm looking for the... the rules for, like, tallying up the points. Oh, Nika's fucking comment. Heck, gang, I'm sorry I keep doing a heckin' evil. <laughs> I do keep doing a heckin' evil. <laughs> oh, shucks. Oh, I think I found it. One second, everybody. Um, can everybody add up their numbers so that... I only got 15. And yours is 13 negative? Yep. I have 15 positive. 10 positive? I'm looking for aftermath cards is what I'm looking for, and they're not coming up. They, something changed in my roll 20 here. Or like how they do it, how they tally things up. So did I successfully hench? Oh, definitely. You most certainly successfully henched. <laughs> like it really wouldn't be a fiasco if something didn't go wrong with every time I try to find something in this game. It should be right here. Blood for the blood god. I I feel stupid not being able to find this guys. I am very sorry. Um be, like it zero if your character has zero it means you basically die. If you have anything twelve or above either direction, your character did amazing. What is going on with this? Well, if you're dead, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, see, that, that's what I mean. Like, because, um, because we all just killed each other. And that's the way that that one's supposed to work. But they didn't give me an additional scorecard to keep track of. This, consider this my, like, little review of Fiasco. I think your game's great, but we need to work on the Roll20 integration. I feel like you guys are listening. 
Which you're probably not, but you should. Because I'm pretty cool. <laughs> but that... You did not die. Nobody... Uh, the only person that really died was Tarkus. Well, nobody really died, but Tarkus, Midnight, Howl, and Pym. And I was high trying noon, to kill yeah. Cass. Oh, High Noon. High Noon died. Not Midnight. High Noon... <laughs> high Noon died for real. When High Noon dies in dreams, he dies for real. <laughs> He's so pretty, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> He's gorgeous. That, that was great. What if Midnight was a Ken doll? <laughs> oh my god, he's beautiful. I love it so much. As soon as he flashed on screen, I'm like, oh yeah, he's so cute. I, I love that. I super appreciate one of the serious flawless being in his hair. He's so cute. Hi. I'm gonna stop looking for the score thing. You guys, you know, you know if you died. Um, so many traps, so many traps that just were not seen. That's why, like, I don't know if I was getting annoying at some point where I was just like, "You guys got any more locations you want to play?" Because you guys were not playing the locations that, that everybody trapped. I would have if I had any. I'm sorry, my my hand, um, like full full stop here. Like I had three more needs um, to get respect, to get away from losers, and another to get laid. And then I had the axe, which I guess technically I used, and then the roughly carved occult symbols. I didn't have any locations, and I only had that one relationship card in the beginning. Um, that was That was my whole hand. I didn't have a single location. If Howl didn't succeed, I was gonna use the lake. Oh! Honestly, I was looking for uh, for an opportunity to play uh, this card, the embarrassing sappy undelivered love letter, but I, I just didn't find one. Oh! I wasn't sure if that was I wasn't sure if that was trapped or not, but. Uh, the only, the, hmm, I don't want to, I don't want to give everything away. Um, but yeah, the, the lake was trapped to hell. The, um, the admin office was trapped to hell. The spooky shack was trapped, but don't worry about it. Cast is not scared at all. <laughs> Cast as an edgy fucking teenager, just like, nope, not scary. Um, with that, I think we're done, guys. You all did amazing. Fiasco is always a treat. I hope we had fun. Um, tomorrow we are playing Don't Rest Your Head um, at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Then on Monday we play One Honk Before Midnight. Again, 5 p.m. Look forward to those games. They're going to be ridiculous. I'm not sure if this ridiculous or last ridiculous. I hope so, though. I really do. Um... All right. Say goodbye forever, everybody. Bye forever. Bye forever. Goodbye forever. Oh, me.